Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Dan. Wow, that's wonderful. Let's see. Can you still hear me? Yes. <laughs> and see my face at the same time. <laughs> um, so as I begin, let's, um, let's remember that you don't have to believe anything I say. Um, and the other thing I want to say is when I speak of God, I want to speak of God, the God of your understanding. Um, I um, have been unable to decide what God means to people for a long time, <laughs> a very long time. Um, but as I'm going to um, mention God as part of the Course in Miracles, which speaks of God quite a bit, um, that's what I wanted to say. So as, um, as I begin my talk, I'd like to tell a story. The story is told of a woman Zen master named Sono, I'm sure some of you are aware of this story, who taught one very simple method of enlightenment. She advised everyone who came to her to adopt an affirmation to be said many times a day under all conditions. And the affirmation was, thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. Many people from all areas of life came to Sono for healing, and some were physically in pain, some were emotionally distraught, others had financial troubles, and some were seeking enlightenment, liberation, spiritual liberation. Um, no matter what their distress or what their question was, she always said, thank you for everything. Say this always. Thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. And some people went away disappointed and others grew angry. Others tried to argue with her. Yet some people took her suggestion to heart and began to practice it. Tradition tells us that everyone who practiced Sono's mantra found peace and healing. Thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. Now, I am not going to ask you to stop complaining <laughs> because I know we're not going to stop our complaining. I know our complaints will diminish if we're willing to say this affirmation as long as we think of it and as long as we stay aware of our complaints. If we say to ourselves, I have no complaint whatsoever. We will start to notice how often we complain. And I was shocked when, <laughs> when I started to think how often I complain, <laughs> really. Um, most of my thoughts were complaints. The house is a mess. When am I going to take care of this problem or that problem? Um, how come I can't get stronger? What's wrong? What's, what's wrong with my body this time? <laughs> Why do I have to do this? And um, we absolutely, I, I, I won't tell you not to express your complaints because we absolutely have to express our complaints, but only to our therapist. <laughs> Or to, or to any sane person who we know with absolute certainty will remember who we really are, who will be able to remember that we are not, we are not our pains, we are not our distress, we are not our stress. We, we, we are God's children. We are an expression of our divine source. We are loved more than we can know. Here's a little quote from Eckhart Tolle, who I listen to frequently. We find peace not by rearranging the circumstances of our lives, which, which we always want to do, right? <laughs> 
but by realizing who we are at the deepest levels. And I discovered some interesting things about us humans as I looked deeper into our complaining. Um, it is human nature to complain and to criticize, to condemn. The world is a mess. Things are not going. Things don't go for us as we'd like them to. We, we don't, and we don't really need things to go always well. They won't go perfectly anyway. And it's time for us to be at peace with that. We will grow <laughs> the most during times of challenge. And I've talked about this many times before. So what happens to us when we complain? It seems to be about complaining just depresses all of our energies. Um, and, and it sounds like when, when we're complaining, it sounds like anger, and it sounds like we're getting power from, from our voice, from our angst. Uh, but really, what's happening in your body, it's a, it's a, it's a contraction. It's not, it's not a powerful place. We can choose to choose not to react. We can choose to respond to those things that stimulate our, our res response to the things we get upset about. So there is one of our fears that bears mentioning, and that is our fear of love. I do not mean the uncertainty we experience in our human relationships or the very real joy that we experience in our human relationships. I mean the fear of we have of experiencing God's love for us. And the Bible talks a lot about it. The Course in Miracles talks a lot about it, about that love. And even this morning, we've, we've heard those words that may we rest in the, in, may we bask in the warmth of God's love. Just, just a few words of a few thoughts. Um, that's a very uh, powerful that's a very powerful part of our lives, this sense, this sense that God loves us. And our very large ego self keeps us away from experiencing um, the extraordinary expanse of that love. So I want to I want to read a couple words a few words from The Course in Miracles, and then I want to tell you about an experience I had. Under the ego's dark foundation, this is, uh, this is chapter 13, third paragraph, third, third something or other. <laughs> <laughs> paragraph two, yeah, I don't, I don't know the terminology. Under the ego's dark foundation is the memory of God, and it is of this that you are really afraid for this memory would instantly restore you to your proper place. Your fear of attack is nothing compared to your fear of love. And I, I just thought that was really interesting. Um, so, in uh, about 40 years ago, one night I was sitting in my house. This was a small house on the north side of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Every morning I would go for a walk over the hills and there was the dump over there. So it's really a, a, a beautiful spot within reason, you know. Um, but I was, uh, I was a sitting, um, sitting kind of probably in meditation. I don't remember, but I do remember what happened. I first experienced an overwhelming love, and I knew that love was was the love of God. I just, it was just incredible. It was just like a, it just like um, bursting, 
bursting. So it lasted about a second and was quickly followed by fear. It, it wasn't followed by fear, it was interrupted by fear. Um, so, and I quickly came back to consciousness, to normal consciousness, thinking, whoops, I just missed something really important. <laughs> and so, and so that's, been, um, that's been my understanding about that experience um, ever since. We could just remember how much we are loved. If we take it to another level, if we're able to take it to that level that takes us out of the ordinary thoughts that we have all the time, every day, if we could just take it to that higher level. Now, even that instant that I experienced that love was enough to let me know that it's possible to experience that sometimes, forever. Some, some people do. Obviously, some people do. We are a reflection of that love. And every day we ask ourselves to be that love. And there's no question that we are, we, we do it to a certain extent and is also no question that our ego will take that understanding and turn it into something that it is not. So I, um, I want to read um, from Aaron through Barbara Brodsky. For the human who says, no, I will not get caught up in this. What is your protection? Your protection is love. Your protection is to hear these prophecies and to say to yourself and others, I will not live my life based on these prophecies of fear. And we all can understand how the news gives us prophecies of fear also. Then you work in whatever directions feel most appropriate to you, in human rights, in social welfare, in support of the environment, in whatever areas call out to you, you work toward the welfare of all beings. You learn to relate to the word in as deeply loving and open-hearted a way as you can, especially toward those who are negative in the world. And I, I see that so many, many, many people in the world recently, as, as things get more difficult in some areas, things, people respond in, in such glorious ways, in such extraordinary ways to, to lift, lift each other up. We, when, as we complain, we completely lose our power we think it gives us power, we lose our power. Our forgiveness lies, our power lies in forgiveness and an open heart. So what happens to us? I, I mean, I know that it's possible to get worried <laughs> um, about what, what's gonna happen to me when I stop complaining. <laughs> I, mean, I have a, I have an ex-husband living in Canada, and he calls me once or twice a year to complain. The, the, the price of housing, the, the price of food, the problems with the Canadian government, what it's doing to people, it's not supporting people, and, and so forth. It, and it's, um, it's totally predictable. And I know that all of us have these kinds of people in, in our lives, and the only thing we can do is respond, respond with, the, with, with our love and kindness and, and generosity and joy. 
so we one thing of, I was thinking um, about getting letting go of my complaining I would life would be pretty empty <laughs> can, I mean can you see that I mean I can see that it, 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 it would be easy to think that my life would be quite empty <laughs> so do we really need people who complain about things I suppose in some areas we do but I don't I think most of the time I don't think we really need people who complain a lot. We may notice that we attract more peaceful people into our lives. We enjoy life because we are moving toward peace. We are much more present for things we like and things we don't like. It's it, that, that place of presence, that place of I'm aware of what's going on around me, I, I like this, I don't like this, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to see what it's like to be without labeling any part of my being as this is a good way to be and this is a bad way to be. Let's not label it, see what it feels like just to be, just to be present. It's not easy to be present but it nurtures us so deeply and and that presence is what is what we want we want to know the presence of God in our lives we want to know the presence of ourselves in our lives in in every part of our lives we may experience spaciousness in our lives and quiet there's there's quiet there. And um, we may not be as busy. And the busy will, will be more enjoyable, definitely more enjoyable. Because we're not, we're not complaining about it. Imagine, we're not complaining about it. <laughs> because I notice that I plan a lot ahead because I've made agreements to do things to be places so I so there I am in the future I've got to do this I've got to do that and 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 it's true I do I made I've made those commitments it's true I do and I can do them with more presence than I may have done them in the past I take a breath so I bring, what I do, what I personally do is bring more small spiritual practices into my life, like just taking a deep breath um, to be present with myself and without judgment, without any judgment of any kind. Imagine that. <laughs> I, I choose to respond to things instead of react to things, I, I, um, and, and I think that's a spiritual practice. <laughs> and and um, one thing I like to do, one thing I like to do is, is remember who I am. And that just kind of, br you know, brings things together. There's a, actually there's something from the Course in Miracles. Let me let me read this. I actually wrote it down. Lesson seventy three. Above all else, you want the freedom to remember who you really are. So I often say that. I will I will say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot who I really was, who I really am. And, and, or I say, I'm going to take a few moments to remember who I really am before I make a judgment about the news or something that's coming my way. And that is, that's what I have to say. Oh, oh, one more thing. I'd like to hear us all say together. Do you remember it? Thank you. Thank you.
for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. Yes. <laughs> So now it's um, feedback time. I think we have a few minutes. 